In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to create a true color RGB image with Youth Astronet using red, green, and blue filtered images. Okay, so yesterday I requested three images of the Orion Nebula, and today I'm going to combine them into an RGB image with JS9 4L. You can see the images here in the My List dropdown. One image was taken with a blue filter, one with a green filter, and one with a red filter. If you don't have these images yet, you should first watch the tutorial called How to Request an Image, where you'll learn how to request images with RGB filters. Or, if you are just here to practice the process, you can choose RGB images from the Archived Images dropdown over here. Options like the Orion Nebula and Ring Nebula were taken with RGB filters. Make sure to open all three. Okay, so we're ready to start processing in JS9. I'll go back to the My List dropdown to find the three RGB images I requested. Here they are, piled up in the middle of my dropdown. I'll click on each one, and as I do, each one opens in JS9 and pops up up here now under Opened Images. If I want to close any of them, I can click on each X to the right of the name, and the image will close out of JS9 too. But I want them open, so one, two, three. There, three images open. However, even though all three are open, we can only edit one image at a time in JS9. Whichever image is in front, that's the one that you can edit. Just click on the My List dropdown again. My List tells you which image is in front by highlighting it in green. And if you want to switch images, just click on one of the other images in this dropdown. Easy. Now let's process each of the three images. I'm not going to explain how all of these buttons and sliders work and I'm going to go through this step kind of quickly. But if you get confused, I recommend you watch the tutorial How to Process a Fits Image. Okay, I'll start with the first image in my list. There, now it's in front and I can process the image. First, I'll change the scale to log because the Orion Nebula is a pretty dim image. Second, I'll set the low brightness limit to the lowest pixel values that I'm seeing in the background sky in the image. It looks like it's generally around 275 to 280. I'll plug 278 in. Feel free to bump it up or down to pinpoint the best contrast for your nebula. You can adjust contrast and bias too if you like, but I'm not going to for this tutorial. Okay, the third step is one you maybe haven't seen before. We need to color the image and the color we choose needs to be based on the filter that we used to take this image. So how do I know what filter was used? Check the fits header, that's how. To open the fits header, go to the image dropdown and select display fits header. The fits header always has a lot of useful information, including the filter used to take the image. Right, so here we are, filter equals red. Now we know this image was taken with the red filter, which only let red light through to the light detector. So close this fits info, either click the word close here or just press the escape key. Go up to the color dropdown and choose red. There. Now our red filtered image has been recolored according to a black to red color scale. We're done processing our red image, so we can set it aside for now and move on to the next open image in our list. With the second image, we're going to do the exact same thing as before. The only difference is that we're going to use a different color map for the image, depending on which color filter was used. Okay. Quick run through. Change the scale to log. Find the minimum pixel value of the background sky, something like 272 maybe. Update the low brightness limit. That looks good. Update the high brightness limit to whatever looks best to you. All right, and now we're going to color the image again. Remember how to check what filter was used? Exactly. Check the fits header up here under the image dropdown. Well, look at that. Looks like filter equals green for this image. So we'll choose green in the color dropdown, and now we have our green filtered image using a black to green color scale. There's one left, so choose the third open image in our list. Again, we'll do the exact same thing as before. I'm not going to narrate the steps this time though. Let's see if you can just follow what I'm doing. Now, one thing that you could probably figure out by process of elimination 
If we've already processed our red image and our green image, then this one must be our blue image, right? Let's check the fits header anyway, just to confirm. And there it is, filter equals blue. Set the color map to blue, and now our blue filtered image has a black to blue color scale. And with three processed and colored images, we're ready to combine them into one true color RGB image. A true color image aims to capture the natural optical color of an object in space. That requires combining all three images into one image, so that you can see all three layers at once. To do that, go back to the color dropdown and select RGB mode. Look at that. Now you can see the red, the blue, and the green image layers all on one screen. So you've got your RGB image. Oh, wait a minute. The three layers aren't lined up. Why not, you ask? Well, the images weren't all taken at the same time. They represent three separate one-minute exposures, taken at three separate times. From one exposure to the next, the telescope won't point in exactly the same direction. So we have to shift the image layers ourselves to get them to line back up. We do that by going to the Tools dropdown and selecting Shift. I'll move the Shift tool to the side so it doesn't interfere with our images. If I click on these arrows a few times, you can see that one of the image layers is shifting around a bit. Can you tell which one? I'll click back and forth a few more times. Looks to me like it's the blue layer that I'm shifting. That's because the blue layer is still in front. If you go back up to the Milas dropdown, the blue layer is still the one that I have highlighted. Plus, you can see that we still have a black to blue color scale down here. Even though I can see all three layers, I can still only edit one at a time. If you want to edit a different one, just select it from my list, and that layer will now be in front. See? Now the green layer is in front and ready to be edited. I'm going to start with the red layer though, because it's easier to see. Now I want to carefully line this red layer up with one of the other layers. I'll use the green layer because it's also fairly easy to see. Every click on one of these arrows moves the layer one pixel in that direction. Sometimes it takes a while, but it lets you be very precise as you line your images up. You pretty much have to eyeball it until you think you've got the alignment just right. You can also open the magnifier feature under tools to make the process of lining up layers even easier. The magnifier zooms in wherever your cursor is on the image. Looks like these two layers are almost perfectly lined up. And yeah, that looks good to me. Now that red and green are aligned, let's line up the blue layer too. I think that was the third one, and yep, you can see the color down here goes black to blue. You could check the fits header again too if you're nervous, but the color scale is good enough for me. Okay, so I'm shifting again, like with the others. It's not always easy to tell, but just find an area of the image that you can see most clearly. A bright, well-focused star on a dim background usually works pretty well. A little bit more... Bingo. If you feel like anything is still a little off, you can switch between the layers for some last little tweaks. Oh, huh. I never adjusted the high brightness limit for the red layer. I thought there was something a little off about this layer, so that explains it. Okay, now this looks good, so I'm going to lock it in. Go to the image dropdown and select Save as PNG, or JPEG if you prefer. Don't choose Save as Fits though. This option will not save any of the fancy processing that you've just done. And there I go, a stunning true color image of the Orion Nebula, which I made from red, green, and blue filtered layers, and which you can now do too. And if you want to learn how to make an even sharper RGB image by removing image noise, be sure to watch the tutorial, How to Create an Advanced RGB Image.